तो यू कैरियोटिक सेल कैरियोटिक सेल ओके सो यू कैरियोटिक सेल्स मीन्स इट विल इंक्लूड ऑल दी प्लांट्स एनिमल्स एंड द प्रोटिस्टास Okay, so whatever we have seen in the prokaryote, that was what like only few organelles were present. But in a eukaryotic cell, completely fully mechanized cells it will be. So they will be having everything such as membrane bound vesicles, membrane bound vesicles, or you can say organelles, plus. a well developed nucleus that is organized nucleus with envelope that is the nuclear envelope which contains what the genetic material which is dna that is chromosomes and dna okay so like that of the prokaryotic cells eukaryotic cells are not identical means not all the cells can be identical because they will differ according to their complexity such as plants and animals okay so if you see plants and animals both of them will be having eukaryotic cells but they will not be identical in their function okay so uh, usually if we see like in both the plants and animals okay if you see certain structures Like like the similar structures we'll see first, like uh, I'll just write it. Okay, the structure or organelle of the plant cell and animal cell, plant cell and animal cell. So basically, first thing that we can consider over here is the cell wall. So in plant cell there will be a cell wall, but in the animal cell it's not there. in the same way if we take the plastids okay plastids will be present in the plant but it will be absent in the animals then third one is um, centrioles okay so centrioles they are absent in plants but present in animal cell whereas vacuoles here it will be a large vacuum large central vacuole it will be but in case of animals it will be either very small or absent so this is what the basic difference in this four organelle of the plants and animal cell okay so now we are going to see the cell organelles one by one so the first one is the cell membrane cell membrane so if you take any living cell okay all the cells will be having a cell membrane okay which is nothing but a thin layer elastic transparent and semi permeable semi permeable means only selective things okay it will allow to pass through the uh, membrane so that's why it's called as the uh, semi permeable membrane so cell membrane also has other names such as plasma membrane or plasma lemma okay so this structure was found when they uh, like when they use the betterment of the microscope which is the electron microscope so instead of a what do you say compound microscope they use this electron microscope and from there only they study the detailed structure of the cell membrane that it has many things like for example uh they saw the rbcs that is the red blood cells okay then they saw in detail like what 
does the cell membrane actually consist of or what is it made up of? Okay, so basically when they found, like when they studied the RBCs in the humans, okay, the RBCs of the human beings, then they got to know that this particular cell membrane is composed of lipid. Okay, that also not one layer of lipid, but two layers of lipid. Okay, so if they ask the composition, mostly the cell membrane is having what? Lipid, which is bilayer, plus it has some protein molecules in it. Okay, so lipids means what? It is nothing but the fat. So basically cholesterol or say phospholipids. Okay, so if the lipids are present, they will be arranged in two layers. That is the bilayer. And most probably they will be what? Polar hydrophilic. which faces outwards, faced outwards, and hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means water hating. Okay, hydrophilic means water loving. So hydrophobic will be non-polar. So these lipids, non-polar, they will be facing inwards the cell. Okay, so cell membrane is basically made up of bilayer lipid as well as protein molecules out of which the lipids which they studied in the RBCs according to that it was cholesterol and phospholipids. So two types of uh, category in the lipids that is one is hydrophilic and another one is hydrophobic. So hydrophilic which is there it is faced outwards the cell whereas the hydrophobic is faced inwards to the cell. Okay, whereas the proteins. So proteins are usually two types uh, it has. One is the peripheral protein another one is the integral protein and integral protein okay so mostly they will lie on the surface like it will be like beads embedded into the bilayer membrane of the lipids okay so this is what the overall composition of the cell membrane but to know it in detail there was a model given for it which is called as a fluid mosaic model So for the study of the cell membrane structure, uh, this theory or this model was accepted mostly. Okay, and this was proposed by Singer and Nicholson. So according to this model, it says that there is a model called as Cauchy fluid nature, which is basically of lipids in the plasma membrane. Okay, so what is this Cauchy fluid nature lipids in the plasma membrane? This is nothing but uh, there should be a movement of the molecules inside and outside, right? So for that purpose only, like uh, basically the proteins which are on the surface, they should go inside. So for that purpose only, this particular structure or this particular nature is present in the uh, cell membrane is what this fluid mosaic model states. Okay, so... According to their proposal, it seems that the Cauchy fluid nature, which is the lipids, okay, it allows what? The lateral movement, lateral movement to proteins within the bilayer. Okay, so this allows what? The proteins to move within that particular bilayer. Uh, apart from this, this also contributes to certain things such as cell growth or division of the cell. Then uh, certain secretions. Okay, and endocytosis. Okay, so as we already know that whatever the cell membrane or the plasma membrane is there, that is what? selectively permeable right selectively permeable 
plasma membrane. Okay, so according to this, selectively permeable means what? Only certain substances only will move across the cell. Okay, so depending upon this, we have different modes of transport over here. Okay, depending upon the movement or the permeability, there are what? Different modes of transport, which happens through the cell. So those modes are, I just write here, mode of transport and which type of molecules get transported type of molecules okay so the first one is the passive transport second uh, active transport active transport then third simple diffusion Both osmosis and fifth one carrier proteins. So these are what the five modes of transport which occur within the plasma membrane. So now what is in this the main thing is the active passive transport. So what is act active and what is passive transport? So passive transport means nothing but this is a type of transport where energy is not required. Okay, so no energy is required for the transportation of the molecules. And this will be along the concentration gradient. Along the uh, concentration gradient. Whereas if you see the active transport. Okay, active transport is basically sodium potassium pump also it's called. Okay, and here whatever molecules... To, means for the molecules to get transported, they require energy. It's the opposite, okay, require energy. And that also, this will be against the concentration gradient. Against the concentration gradient. In the same way, diffusion and osmosis. Okay, diffusion, in diffusion, what happens is uh, the solutes, basically the neutral solutes. They will uh, like get transported along the concentration gradient. Along the concentration gradient. Whereas in the osmosis, here there will be movement of water along the concentration gradient. Concentration gradient is what? Where it is moving to or from. Like lower concentration to higher or higher to lower. Okay. Concentration gradient. Whereas carrier proteins means here they will uh, like transport the polar molecules. Molecules. So these are what the five modes of transport. How do they transport the molecules uh, through that particular selectively permeable plasma membrane. Fine. Now the next cell organelle, which is cell wall. Okay, so cell wall is the outer covering of plasma membrane, that is a cell membrane. So if we see the cell wall, it is primarily divided into three parts or differentiated into three parts. Okay, that is the first one, which is called as the middle lamella then uh, primary wall and secondary wall so now what is this middle lamella primary wall and secondary wall so middle lamella means this uh, like part will be having what calcium pectate composition Okay, so because it's having calcium, see now in bones also we have calcium phosphate, right? So now what is the function over here is it will keep the neighboring cells intact. Okay, so it will help in what the adherence you can say. So there will be no gap. 
Okay, so that is the function of this calcium pectate in the middle lamella. Second one is the primary wall. So primary wall means what? It'll help in the growth because it can grow, right? So mostly you will find this primary wall of the cell wall in the young plants. Young plants. Whereas the secondary wall will be the inner side. So whenever a cell matures, okay, then there will be a formation of the secondary cell. So this is formed where in the inner side. On uh, in inner side of mature cells. Okay, so sometimes it may happen that one more uh, extra wall, that is a tertiary wall, may be present. Okay, it depends again uh, on the microorganism, uh, sorry, the cells and its growth where it is present. Okay, so uh, every organelle, if you see, uh, sorry, not organelle, every organism, if you see, the cell wall composition will be different. Some may be having cellulose, some may be having pectin, right? So like how we saw yesterday about the uh, flagella and uh, pili. Okay, so flagella was having flagellin, right? In the same way, pili was having pilin. So depending upon the cells, what work they do, whatever the cell wall composition is there, it will differ. So usually if it's a plant cell, it will be having what? Cellulose. Basic structure which is present in a plant cell frame is nothing but the cellulose. Okay. If we go uh, like same towards the fungus, it will become chitin. Okay. So plant cell is composed of cellulose and fungal cells, their cell wall is composed of what? Chitin. Then the next one, which is the endomembrane system. Endomembrane system. So now endomembrane system means nothing but all the organelles with the membranes inside a cell is called as endomembrane system. So there are different endomembrane system. Okay, like uh, ER, that is the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, okay, lysosome. So, we will see all this one by one. So, the first one which is there is the endoplasmic reticulum. So, I will just write it in terms of the structure and function. So, it will be easy. Okay. So, this is here I will write the organelle. Then the structure and the function. Okay. So, the first one is the ER that is endo. Plasmic <clears throat> reticulum. So, how does this endoplasmic reticulum uh, reticulum look like? Okay. So, first of all, it is nothing but the tubular structures. It's a network of tubular structure. Tubular structure. So, there are two types of uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, that is the rough ER and smooth ER. Now rough and smooth means nothing but rough ER means it will be having ribosome on its surface whereas smooth doesn't have ribosome. That's the only difference. Okay, and the function. Now, rough and smooth, so both will be having different functions. So, if you take the RER, that is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, this is mostly involved in the protein synthesis and secretion. And secretion. Whereas the SER, that is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, is involved in the synthesis of lipid. Synthesis of lipid. Then the second apparatus, that is the Golgi, Golgi apparatus. So Golgi apparatus uh, usually appears flat, disc shaped. Which will be parallelly stacked one above the other. Okay, that is, and that thing is called as what? Sister name. That is called as what? Sister name. So, it will be having like cis form as well as trans form. Two forms it is having 
cis as well as what trans so basically flat disc shaped structures they will be and parallelly they will be occupied and that thing is called as what the sister name fine so what will be the function of the golgi apparatus mostly they are involved in packaging and secretion plus they also help in the formation of glycoproteins okay and glycolipids glycolipids so whatever is synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum that is the proteins and lipids so for the formation of that golgi apparatus is required then comes the third one which is lysosome which are commonly known as suicidal bags suicidal bags so lysosomes are usually single membrane structures which are bound with the vesicles and because they are called as suicidal bags because they secret certain enzymes okay that they hydrolyze that particular uh, thing and they itself gets destroyed okay so hence they are called as what suicidal bags so they are a single membrane okay which is having certain enzymes which are mostly hydrolytic okay so they will be containing mostly all the enzymes such as digestive enzymes okay residual enzymes like that many enzymes whatever is required for the proper functioning of the cell all those things will be there in the lysosomes so what will be the uh, function of it digestion of all the uh, protein molecules carbohydrates lipids nucleic acids so whatever things are found in a like whatever we eat okay all those things should be digested properly so that main role is carried out by this lysozyme enzymes okay so digestion of protein lipids then nucleic acid and carbohydrates carbohydrates then the next structure is vacuoles so again vacuoles are also single membrane structure which is also called as tonoplast okay so as i already told you vacuoles large central vacuoles are present in plant cells right so uh, here uh, mostly this vacuoles you will find where in the plant cells only so here they will be having sac like structures in the cytoplasm which will be having water then sap or the excretory products okay so like when whenever a food is prepared so to store it, uh, store the food what happens is there is a vacuole which is called as food vacuole okay so now how this food vacuole is formed is now this is a fusion of two things one is the lysosome and other one is the phagosome okay so when this two things together fuse together okay then that that forms a vacuole which is called as food vacuole okay so what will be the function of the uh, vacuoles so the function of the vacuole is first one is osmo regulation and excretion so what happened contraction relaxation of the vacuole will take place and it will excrete whatever the unwanted products are there for example best example is the amoeba fertus okay and whatever the food uh, vacuole is there it will just take the food and store inside okay the food vacuole what it will do it will engulf the food okay and it will store like that in case of the amoeba as well as protistas fine then the next one is the mitochondria
So this is called as the powerhouse of the cell. Fine. So this is double membrane structure. Which is having certain uh, folds inside the membrane. So basically their inner membrane. It will fold into matrix and form cristae. Okay, so this cristae will have certain particles which is called as oxisomes. Okay, in short, they are referred as F1 particles called as oxisomes. Okay, so this thing, this, uh, what do you say, uh, the organelle, it is having one more extra thing, which is called as what? A circular DNA. Okay, so the speciality of, of this is what? It has a single circular DNA with a 70S ribosome and RNA. Okay, so whatever energy which a cell gets to prepare the food or to do the functions, everything is because of this mitochondria. So hence, it's called as what? Powerhouse of the cell. Okay, so here the function will be what? Produces energy. That is in the form of ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. Then next organelle is the plastids. So plastids is only found in the plant cell. Plus one more thing which is called as euglenoids. Okay, so this basically deals with the colors. So hence these are, these are not present in the animal cells. So here there are three types of uh, uh, plastids mostly you will see. That is first one is the chloroplast. Okay, so chloroplast means what? It will have chlorophyll in it. So during the photosynthesis, it will trap the sunlight, which in turn is uh, essential for the process of what? Photosynthesis, right? So the chloroplast contain the chlorophyll and some of the colored pigments, which are called as carotenoid pigments. Okay, which help in photosynthesis. Then you have the next one, which is called as the chromoplast. Now, these are usually fat-soluble carotenoid pigment. So, here it will be having colors like carotene and xanthophyll. Okay, that is yellow-orange color. And last is the leucoplast. So leucoplast are colorless. Okay, so they will just store the nutrients. That is the only function of them. So in the leucoplast, because they store the nutrients, again, it's divided into three types. Okay, that is the amyloplast, ileoplast, and alluroplast. Okay, this is, this names are according to what they store. Like if we say amyloplast, they will store what? Carbohydrates, starch, whatever is taken. Then ileoplast uh, means oil and fat they will store. Whereas the alluroplast will store proteins. Okay, so in this chloroplast, this is a very important structure. Okay, so here if we see the chloroplast, you can find them in the mesophyll cell of plants. Which are responsible for photosynthesis. So if you see the structure of the chloroplast, basically it's a double membrane. 
which is having a small double stranded DNA, circular DNA, and a 70S ribosome. Okay, so if you take a section of the chloroplast, it will be having what? The inner membrane, which has stroma. Okay, and this stroma contains flat membranous sac called as thylakoids. Okay, so coin like tracts it will be. Okay, stroma and the thylakoids. So here they, that particular pile like thing is termed as grana. Okay, so this particular thylakoids, they stack together. So this time they are called as what? Grana. So it piles to form, uh, form grana. And they are connected by stroma lamellae. Okay, so because it's a double membrane, so whatever the two membranes are there, they are separated by a thing called as periplastidial space. Or you can also say it as intermembrane space. Okay, so chloroplast is nothing but a double membrane structure and those two membranes are separated by what? Intermembrane space or periplastidial space. Okay, so they are basically present in the mesophyll cells of the leaves for the photosynthesis purpose and it also gives what? Green color to the plants. So it is having a small double stranded circular DNA with a 70S ribosome. Plus if you see the internal section of the, uh, what do you say, chloroplast, it will be having what? A stroma. That stroma contains flat coin-like structures, which is called as thylakoids. And when those thylakoids stack like this, it's called as grana. And this grana is connected with what? The stroma lamellae.